M1 versus M2 Apple Silicon. Old design versus new design. Black bezels versus white. Forehead versus notch. Potato cam versus 1080p. LCD versus mini LED. $9.99 versus $11.99. If you're perseverating over grabbing an M1 MacBook Air just now, 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 or trying to hold out for the M2 variant later, I got you for this and for every single Apple product coming up next. So hit the subscribe button and bell, and let's do this. Design. The M1 MacBook Air just did not get a new one. It stuck with the same enclosure it's had since 2018 in specific and 2010 in general. And that's okay, that's fine. It's a classic and it gave Apple not just a known thermal envelope for that M1 chipset, but some breathing room to focus on the new iMac and MacBook Pro designs. Plus, it kept the price down, and more on that in a potentially showstopper minute. And yes, it's still thin, still light, still the absolute easiest Mac to carry from home to school to work, or these days from kitchen to bedroom to couch. And it still has that famous Star Destroyer wedge shape, the one that launched a thousand Ultrabook clones. And I still love it. I all caps love it. It's just not so new anymore. But that's exactly where the rumored M2 redesign is supposed to come in. According to reports, it'll be a bit flatter and more retro, like the new MacBook Pro, but lighter and thinner and way less wedgier. Maybe as light and thin and flat as the previous, now discontinued 12-inch MacBook, once again pushing the envelope, the manila envelope, on what an ultralight, ultra-portable Mac really means. And maybe, just maybe, deleting the Air brand again once and for all, taking back the MacBook, as in MacBook nothing brand. Also, of course, Thanos snapping those bezels and making the overall casing around the display as hipster and minimalist as it possibly can be. Reportedly off-white, like the recent 24-inch M1 iMac design, which Apple thinks fades away better into home and front of house decor, and bringing back that old school iBook or just modern iMac style taste the rainbow palette of colors, which, yes, I cannot goram fracking wait. I am so excited, I am mixing my sci-fi cursing metaphors. But if you just don't care about design and the classic air is more than light and thin enough, and you prefer your air wedged, your bezels black, and your casings more silver and space gray conservative, then get the M1 now. Otherwise, if you're all hot and bothered about the potential for something even smaller and lighter and flatter, with off-white bezels and a cavalcade of colors, you're gonna wanna wait for the M2. The M1 MacBook Air has the best display ever in an Air. 13.3 inches and retina, but only standard dynamic range and just nowhere nearly as bright as Apple's more recent displays, which is what the M2 MacBook is supposedly about to fix. Probably the same 13.3 inches, give or take, just in a smaller enclosure, like what Apple did with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro rather than the 11 inch iPad Pro or 14 inch MacBook Pro, though maybe, just maybe, with a notch. That is, if Apple wants to get the bezels as small as inhumanly possible and also increase the quality of the camera as much as is inhumanly possible, which, yes, just all the fingers crossed. Also, the M2 display is rumored to be switching to mini LED, which Apple seems intent on pushing across their whole entire premium product lineup right now. That'll allow for HDR, high dynamic range, meaning deep, inky shadows and bright, blinding highlights. Probably no 120 hertz promotion, since Apple seems just as intent on keeping that feature exclusive to their pro level product line, at least for now, but otherwise just a huge, huge escalation in display all around. So if the current display is just more than enough for your current computing needs, go ahead and get the M1 MacBook Air. But if you are holding to hope for some high dynamic range, you're gonna have to hold out for the M2. The M1 MacBook Air has the M1, Apple's first generation of custom silicon for the Mac. It's based on the same IP and architecture as the A14 Bionic in the iPhone 12. And I've got a whole entire deep dive video up on that which I'll drop a link to in the description below the like button. But basically, it's an ultra low power system on a chip, which means it's ultra efficient to the point of providing 18 hours of battery life, but also way higher performance than any other chipset in its class. There's no fan, so it's also ultra quiet. But if you wanna do heavy sustained workloads, like longer than 20 minutes, you may wanna check out the Pro instead, which does have a fan. Otherwise, it's just as ultra fast and ultra responsive as it is quiet and long lasting. Like, game changer level all around. But the M2 MacBook Pro will have M2, Apple's second generation custom silicon. And if it comes out anytime soon, that means it'll almost certainly be based on the same IP and architecture as the A15 Bionic, 
the one in the iPhone 13. So more efficient performance cores, higher performance efficiency cores, way more powerful and more numerous graphics cores, and maybe even some level of ProRes rendering engines, the kind that Apple just brought over to the new MacBook Pros, at least enough to make ultra light video editing, if nowhere nearly as powerful or pro level, at least way less frustrating than it's ever been on any ultralight before. In other words, same if not slightly better battery life, but a whole, whole lot more capability. Unfortunately, there's nothing to suggest an increase in memory, storage, Wi-Fi technology, or the addition of any cellular options, at least not this time around. So if the M1 is more than enough power and battery life for you and your needs right now, go ahead and get it right now. But if you wanna see Apple squeeze just a little more power into a little less packaging, wait for the M2. For a few years there, the MacBook Air was the only Apple laptop left standing, loitering with legacy ports. But in 2018, it went all in on USB-C and Thunderbolt, just like everything else. All in meaning two of them, even if both were, yes, hey cap, on your left. And that's what the M1 has, two of them, both on the left, with just a 3.5 millimeter audio jack left on the wrong, meaning right side. The M2 MacBook is rumored to be restoring at least the MagSafe port, Apple's magnetic charging dingus. That should be in addition to two USB 4 ports, which carry both USB-C and Thunderbolt 4, because going to one port, even one port plus MagSafe, would be just one hell of a regression. So if you're cool with two USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports, then just go get the M1 MacBook Air. And if you're at all worried Apple might drop that down to one, go get the M1 MacBook Air now. But if you think M2 might give you MagSafe back, two USB-C slash Thunderbolt 4 ports, and maybe a properly sighted 3.5 millimeter audio jack as well, you'll just have to wait and see. The M1 MacBook Air starts at $9.99, even less with an education discount or if you can find it on sale. And that's always been just the minimal magical price for the Air. And sure, $9.99 isn't as cheap as a low-end plastic PC book, but given the performance, the battery life, the build quality, the Mac OS, just everything that comes with it, the value just vastly, vastly exceeds the cost, which is exactly why the MacBook Air is perennially the most popular Mac and huge for some people, it's available now. The M2 MacBook though, that might start at $10.99 just to cover the increased cost of mini LED maybe even $11.99 if there are any other new technologies Apple needs to pay down on top of that, which is why rumor has it the M2 isn't meant to replace the M1, but to slide in on top of it as a more premium option, at least at first. And that really wouldn't be anything new for the MacBook or the Air. They've always, always launched at higher prices and then in the Air's case, dropped back down over time. And in the 12 inch MacBook's case, just been dropped over time. Plus, the earliest we might see it is this spring, but it could take all the way until late fall. So if money or time matters to you the most, or you just want an entry-level MacBook Air, you'll want the M1 available now. But if money and time are literally no object to you, and you're lusting after a higher-end redesigned MacBook, then you're going to want to wait on M2. And I am nowhere nearly smart enough to do all the math, the relativistic physics, the quantum mechanics, the probability theory around those equations for you but that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in, the online interactive STEM learning platform. And there is absolutely no better time to get started with Brilliant than now, the new year. They have a growing catalog of courses specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visual, hands-on ways. And I cannot stress this enough. I wish, I wish school had been like this because it would have been just so much less stressful. And Brilliant has been totally revamping their courses so they're even more interactive, including their brand new logic course, which is just jam packed with opportunities for hands-on problem solving. For example, exercises like this one just open up your mind and help you look at problems in completely new ways, maybe even enough to figure out the maximum risk reward ratio in buying an M1 MacBook Air now versus waiting for an M2 MacBook, or maybe to eventually one day become an engineer who works on MacBooks and the Mac because everyone starts somewhere. So to get started now for free, visit brilliant.org slash Richie or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Richie. Clicking on this button really, really helps out the channel. And so does clicking on this playlist for more videos on everything Apple has coming our way in 2022. So click on that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.